Botox Cosmetic, out of botulinum toxin A, FDA approved for over 20 years. So, talk to your specialist to see if Botox Cosmetic is right for you. For full prescribing information, including boxed warning, visit BotoxCosmetic.com or call 877-351-0300. Remember to ask for Botox Cosmetic by name. To see for yourself and learn more, visit BotoxCosmetic.com. That's BotoxCosmetic.com. Hail the flashlight, King. Hail you! And now, from the mayor's office above the boathouse on the east shore of Spoon Lake, it's Garage Logic with Chris Reavers manning Technology Corner, Kenny Olson from the Krabby Coffee Shop, John Hyde in the newsroom, and of course, the rookie. Here is your flashlight king, fireworks commissioner, and the keeper of common sense, your mayor, Joe Sushir. Nope, it's Reavers here in the GL Podcast Studios. Fratelloni's Hardware and Garden Stores bringing you this best of edition of Garage Logic. The uh, the mayor is recovering, um, and he'll tell you more about it tomorrow. I spent a few minutes on the phone with him today, but he needed to stay home today, so an unexpected best of. But everything's okay. He'll be back with us uh, tomorrow to do the show here live in the GL Podcast Studios again. And so I was looking through the archives of uh, a lot of the sh- a lot of the shows that we have done and that's the phrase that uh, stuck with me because one of my favorite episodes that we've done over the past couple of years is when Frank Caliendo joined us in studio and uh, we need some laughs right in the uh, in the crazy world that we live in currently so that's the one I chose for today so I hope you enjoy this best of garage logic Fratelloni's hardware and garden stores brings you garage logic podcast number 1159 September 27th, 2023. Dear Is that what you're looking for? Yeah. 1,159. <laughs> oh, Nicely my done. gosh. Hey. Oh, I had no idea. That's yeah. incredible. Yeah. Thank you, Frank. <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> Try and finish this. The whole show is going to be reacting reacting to the number of podcasts. 88 <laughs> degrees on this day in 1987. 29 degrees. Whoa, wait, in, in 1987. That's right. <laughs> oh, 29 degrees. Holy cow. And while I mention that, Frank, because we're issuing heat warnings now for the Twin Cities Marathon this weekend. Oh, really? Because it might be 84 or 83. But on this day in 1987, it was 88, Frank. And 80. on this day in 1991, when we had a Halloween blue blizzard coming up, Frank, it was 29 degrees. It's really going to drive me nuts throughout this podcast. Hail you, the every, flashlight, so, King. Say, Frank, <laughs> it's like Seinfeld. Did you ever watch Seinfeld? Yeah, you know. They go, what do you think, Kramer? <laughs> oh, I think that's good, Jerry. <laughs> <laughs> what do you think, George? <laughs> I don't know, Jerry. You want me to just kill the theme? <laughs> we good? Sure, go. All right. Frank Kelly handles at the comment of uh, the Why is uh, the theme going? Why are you talking? Don't do my plug <laughs> over the theme. Yeah, of, course, Joe. Rookie, of course, Rookie was knocked off. <laughs> What's happening? Sushi. We'll then we turn know. it up. Yeah. No, it's over. I don't want to. It's over. Frank Caliendo is with us. He's at the Acme Comedy Club tonight and tomorrow night. I believe those are sold out. There's, uh, I think there's a few. There's probably 20 tickets left tonight and uh, five or ten tomorrow. All right. And you flew into town last night. I did. You're on the Frank Caliendo Comedy 2023 tour. I mean, all of that in that statement is true. I don't know if it's actually called that, but kind of, I'm just doing some shows to try and remember how to do stand up and goof around. And what is the end game for doing these shows? Where do you want to take this? An HBO special? Uh, may, yeah, maybe work on some new stuff to get out there. Yeah, that's it's kind of just get. I just I don't get up and write unless I have a reason to. Yeah. So that's more it. I, I'm semi-retired. You wouldn't understand. And uh, <laughs> <laughs> that is so accurate, Frank. That is so accurate. Uh, so I, you know, <laughs> I've got. Uh, you know, uh, it, it, my life has become just more or less trying to keep my kids from hating me. So <laughs> yeah. you're not in L.A. anymore. You're no, not in Abbott Costello's house. No, no. You, you remember that? You yeah. looked that up. What yeah. was it? No, no. You told us. About Did you it. use yeah. that as a selling point? Uh, they might have. My wife had some celebrity uh, real estate agent do it. So okay. I don't okay. I don't know. I don't remember what. And you're in Tempe. Arizona. Yeah. yeah, right down the street from why, Arizona. Why? State. Why did you leave L.A.? Uh, I was. I didn't want to really raise my kids in Los Angeles. Right. It was more of it. I just was. Uh, uh, you know, 
the Phoenix ended up being a place that uh, we and Tempe is right outside of Phoenix, just like basically a right. suburb where Arizona State is, um, where people from the Midwest went to not be cold anymore. Right, there was a mix of Southwestern culture, people from uh, California leaving for tax reasons. So that was that was basically there was an uh, amalgamation of different you know a groupings of different people i don't know if amalgamation is the right word but i right, used that it word is uh, screw that word yeah that's I, too big this, i don't know i don't even know i'm here. not sure if it's right <laughs> correct but you're yeah. chicago born waukesha wisconsin yep. maybe are you working your way back here maybe to the midwest uh or do you like being warm working my much? way back to you yeah babe uh, <laughs> Let's see. Yeah, yeah. I just come out to the Midwest because I. It's not hard for me to sell tickets here, mm-hmm. so I can go out, and that's more my my lane of how I do comedy and mm-hmm. just silly, and people know where I'm from, so you know, the, know the know my point of view and such. So it's easier to to do that. Is your act uh, cancel proof? No one say that. No, I don't think so. I mean, are I'm you just, worried about that? Yeah, ever? totally. I'm overly cautious, and I see a lot of podcasts now where people just go over the top. Of this the the even when I see, uh, I always use this example when people ask me about that type of stuff. That I watched uh, see a clip of Bobby Lee and Andrew Santino, and I'm going, holy cow! You know the the jokes uh, Andrew doing like a, a an old school kind of Asian mm-hmm. accent, but Bobby would do it, and because because it's his dad, you know, and then, mm-hmm. uh, or watch Theo Vaughn or somebody. I go, how do they do this? <laughs> I think it's all about, <clears throat> I think it's really all about tone and stuff like that. But now in this world, that's not really what it is. Well, right? do, do I, I'm interested in this. It's it's affected your your business. The, yeah, the but whole... I do a lot of corporate work. So right. as soon as the corporate work do- dries up, I'll probably do more stuff that pushes the envelope slightly. Well, who is it that you? That could cancel you. Uh, well, you, I, there's, the, you know, a corporation might that has me booked it that's going to pay me. The site might then say, they might you know, say, never mind, uh, you're disinvited. Don't. Yeah, that could be that kind of thing. Yeah. So, and especially being involved in sports and the NFL and all that kind of stuff, always had to walk a much more cautious line. So, it's part about where people know you from. <clears throat> I can't think of anybody better to ask uh, uh, this than you. Will the NFL? I don't even know how to phrase the question. Will they try to make something of this Taylor Swift presence? Oh, yeah, of course. Will they they run this into the ground? It's 2023. Right. Everybody milks everything for everything they can. Yeah. I was just thinking about a thing I'll probably do later that I, I... uh, I'm do John Madden circling Taylor Swift on a on a video. <laughs> on a telescreen. <laughs> I mean, you got the, I mean, you got the Travis Kelsey down here and then Taylor Swift up there and then boom. I mean, that's going to be a song pretty soon. <laughs> So. And, uh, they, they are. They're gonna. This is gonna be. Because she's probably gonna be part of the halftime show. Yes, she's always business. I yeah. mean, and good for them. Well, and to, she's also probably the one entity that the NFL can still use to gain following. You know what I mean? Yeah, but her, they, it's not. It's not the true follow. It's not the following of. Oh, it's twelve year old girl who watches. You know, true. It will. It will for the Super Bowl. It'll drive numbers for the Super Bowl if she's involved. True. And this whole thing is is going to drive numbers. I mean. I, I I watch some of the sarcastic uh, trolls on Twitter and stuff like that because of my son. He sends me stuff a lot. And there's this one guy, Barry. Um, do you know who Barry is? No. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I think big, I know where you're... a big black guy? No, no, no. no. This is one? No, this is okay. a guy who's fake. It's, <laughs> oh, okay. It's, I can, I, can you say filthy stuff on here? Or, sure. Or, yeah, well, yeah. It's give not it a really, shot. It's an innuendo. It's but Barry McCockiner. Yeah. Is, that's <laughs> the guy's name. He's Irish. Yeah. No, I know Scottish. exactly who you're talking and about. And he's no. like, fine. Yeah. It's so great that ta- it's or it's he, I think he phrased it this way. It's awful that Taylor Swift used Travis Kelsey to try and gain more followers. Yeah. <laughs> and yeah. Taylor Swift's audience is in oh, swiftly, yeah. so to speak, and just they're stupidly saying Taylor Swift is worth almost a billion dollars. Right. He's only making thirty, only making thirty million dollars <laughs> a year. You know, so stupid. And, but they don't they don't even know because they don't know anything about football. They didn't see the net in yeah. which they all oh, jump yeah. right and it's, into. He's just right. getting. This guy says things t- awful and terrible and funny things. Well, all and the, the time. image is from, I believe, an infomercial from the late '90s or early 2000s of some guy pretending to be a, a physician or whatever. Yeah, probably. Yeah, yeah. yeah. it's it, but it's he, very funny. You should pull him up. It's, yeah. He's got great. I, I'm at the he, point where I think that whole thing's a bit. 
I, which I, which the, the, the uh, Kelsey and Swift? Oh yeah, I think it's because he's got a podcast. Yeah, the New Heights podcast. So yeah, yeah, right. I don't. I'm the you only gave one. Yours you gave yours up. I gave mine up to be here. And yeah. uh, <laughs> no, not to be here. You just gave it up. <laughs> no, they told me. They told me I can't do it anymore if I want to be here. I'm like, I'm done. I have had it. <laughs> <laughs> but the NFL has jumped on that stuff. Remember when Housewives was big and. Uh, who was the wide receiver? Um, Terrell Owens. Owens, when he came on with... Uh, uh, you know my theory. They the, used to be their the, opening. The, so. the league is morphing into a reality TV show, and the, the damsel in distress will be in the end zone, and the tight end will have to fight the tight end of the other club for her affections. It's, a, it, it's, it's headed it, that way. Here's the, my uh, friend who I did the podcast with, who's part of the Hubbard family, who's mm-hmm. got a podcast on Hubbard, is <clears throat> John Holmberg. Right. And he's with KUPD, so his uh, his uh, he's been saying this for years that it's becoming the WWE. Yes. So you're saying reality TV show, yeah. which is yeah. in a way kind of what the WWE WWE you basically nowadays know it's scripted. Reality TV, the regular audience doesn't realize that's scripted. Right. So and the NFL's even doing commercials about f- being scripted now, like mm-hmm. as a joke, mm-hmm. like it's like let's put it right in front of them. Mm-hmm. Uh, so. I don't think it is scripted, but they love the drama because when I was in sports, I, most of the people, the producers and stuff, they don't even love sports as much as they love the stories around sports. Right. It's not about the sport. Like you watch people and you go, well, they barely talk about sports anymore. And it's like, well, yeah, but it's MTV with music videos because yeah. it's the drama that keeps everybody watching. It's not the videos. Will you go back to television if they? I mean, if I had to? a part, if I wanted a part, a smaller part right. like that, that's what I'd like to do. I'd like to do small part in movies or a TV show. Just a, I don't even want to star in a show. I'd right. rather just do a a piece like a David Spade on what was it? Just shoot me. You come in, do your yeah. stuff, and get out. Yeah. That kind of thing where you just have a character to play and and have some fun and not have the whole thing on your shoulders mm-hmm. and just elevates you to maybe be able to do some other things. But whenever they think of me, people think of me, they think of all these different impressions and stuff like that, and that's it. And then they, it's what they end up writing for me, and I end up not getting a character. I end up being myself basically right. doing these impressions. So, Would you ever SNL? Mm. Too much? I'm too old for that. Too old. One, okay. two. Mad TV was how long were we on Mad TV? Four or five years. Four years ago. Okay, no. okay. So... That's a grind, huh? Yeah, I mean, I got out of half of it. To be, I told them I couldn't be there, so I needed to do more NFL stuff, and they believed me because it. They never did what I wanted to do, anyways. Like half the time, they they didn't like the stuff I was wanting to do. So I was like, this isn't really my style of comedy. I'm getting locked into a contract for a while. But Fox got me kind of out of stuff okay. to be able to. To, to do some things more NFL. So they cut down the number of episodes I had to do. I've had talks with Bobby Lee about that. He's like, how did you do that? How did you get out? I'm like, yeah, you know. Good lawyers. Just, the the NFL is bigger than anything else there. So they just I tried, I pretended like I needed more time, <laughs> which in some weeks I did. But they weren't using me really to do much there anyways. They would just do a John Madden sketch and then cut any other sketch that I wanted to do yeah, to but try it, and stretch. It got, it got the likes of me to tune into a pregame, which I don't do now. Yeah, I mean the pregame was huge for me. Yeah. I mean that was a big deal. I mean that was that's a big audience. I, nine yeah. years of that. I don't know if it's as big as it was anymore. I I, I I don't think anything is on TV really. But the other issue is everything's been done by Sunday now. Right. The internet podcasts. Every all the jokes there weren't there weren't comedic sports podcasts or no. radio shows back 20 years ago. No. So when Kimmel was doing stuff, he was the first one to do the joke in the week. Mm-hmm. Nobody had any, you know, Kimmel did that for the first three or, three or four years on the NFL and Fox. He was before me. And he didn't have to worry about Twitter giving up, you know, doing 10,000 jokes and memes. They already, by the time you get to that segment, you have to tape on Thursday to, to edit by Sunday. Right. The jokes are old now. Right. It's hard. Mm-hmm. And they still do some stuff, but it's just hard. Yeah. Have you ever taught anyone to do an impression? Oh, I do it all the time. Can you teach Rookie how to do Trump, for example? <laughs> I'll teach him how to do Jesse the Body. That's a lot better. <laughs> that, that, I've, I've worked on it just for you. <laughs> that ain't no Will Sasso. No, you. I think I still think you might be the best. I, uh, I, uh, I, I, I don't know. <laughs> I'm not sure. No, no. Hold the, the O. The, the ba- but I'm down in the Baja. The, ba- the yeah. Baja. You gotta open your mouth. And, and be off. Are you off the grid? I'm off the grid. I don't have. You know, a lot of times when you something ends with a D or a P. 
you you hold it. You hit it hard. You hit it hard. Hard. I'm gonna really hit this one hard. My, but my Jesse is not as good as it used to be. No, you, but you don't use it as much anymore, probably. No. But Trump, he here's can't what, do here's Trump. What I don't have Frank. I like coffee, but I don't like coffee or naan. I, I can't. That's get Christopher voice. Walken, I think. <laughs> <laughs> I need. I, like I need coffee. more cowbell. I need cowbell. <laughs> well, here's the first thing you do. Make a make a face like you're looking at the yes, Here it is. Make a face. Stick your lips out. Lips out. Lips out. When your lips out. Uh, already better. Out. Lips out. Hit the, hit the T like Jesse. Hit the T like Jesse. Jesse. <gasps> here's Jesse. You. Here's Jesse and bring it up to Trump. Here's Jesse and to bring it up to Trump. Quite frankly, actually, you Quite. look a lot like Alec Baldwin doing it right now. That's do you not know. Good. <laughs> everybody do you duck. Know? Everybody duck. Do you know? At the airport, I get to every day. Every day. I didn't see it until you did Alec that. Baldwin. You're very Alec Baldwin. Not in when he's like the good, the good one. Yeah, he's not when he's shooting somebody on set. You're, you're yeah. losing track. Yes, here. you're back, trying to do Trump. Back to quite, Trump. quite. Whisper it more. Quite, quite miserable. A lot of people. A lot of you're, people. Look at my L. L. A lot, a lot, a lot of people. A lot of, a lot of people. people. Say people. People, people, tremendously, people, tremendous, 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 Where's the nasal coming? Tremendous. I don't think he's that nasal. Biden's okay. very he nasal. Has, it's this. S- it's like you a, to, you it's like a. But you can't go. By, Jesse, a, Jesse does s's. He fights. He fights something because his teeth match up. I think. Yeah. I think Trump. his teeth match up. <laughs> when I say the snake, the Kenny Jake. the snake snabler. <laughs> so let's go, Trumpy. Back to New York. Quite. Are we going quite back That's to better. New York? You did it when you did the eyes. This one? This. You got the eyes. I'm drinking. Are you dotting water. the eyes and crossing the T's? Did I cross the T's? A lot of people. <laughs> I'd like to dot the eye. I dot the eye. Hold the eye. Like you want a little Iranian there. I'd like to dot the eye. <laughs> well, it's always easy when there's five critics. No, here. we're helping no, you. We're helping you. I'm just teasing. <laughs> I'm teasing. I'm, I'm teasing. teasing. I'm teasing. Oh. I tease. I, okay. I like okay. to tease. So. So go, okay. I like to tease. I like. I'm a teaser. And that's I'm a, not a teaser. I'm going back with and forth. Trump, damn it. I, you're I'm you're getting it. Let Trump go you're getting it. Turn your head to the out. side. Now tilt your head to the side. Tilt your head to the side. Tilt your head to which, the side. I'm sorry, which side? <laughs> Either side. It left, depends. There's left. If you use the front camera, it's going to switch it anyways. There's right and there's left. <laughs> left. So which one? And those like? are the ways you should. Joe Biden should exit, and he always goes forward. <laughs> He always goes forward. Yes. So, so you're getting it. You I'm, just lose. You just it. have to work on it. You just have to work on it. You, you, you're, you're, I'm you're, doing someone. You're too, you just uh, don't know who yet. Yeah. You're. Here we go. Time to do that spring cleaning, right? Yes. I want you to think about your air ducts, your carpet, and the whole house getting clean. You're going to save big in March. When you beat the spring cleaning rush with these limited offers from our cleaning heroes at Zero Res. Of course, it's the rookie to tell you about Zero Res. Zero Res has been here from day one. And you know what? 17,000 raving customer reviews online, a 4.9 Google rating. See what the hype is all about. And your air ducts, you gotta, they're like the lungs of your home. If they're dirty, your indoor air quality will suffer. So this month, get three rooms zero resified from Minnesota's number one carpet cleaner, starting at just 129 bucks. Take 75 bucks off your air duct cleaning and 20% off all upholstery. What a deal. You owe it to yourself and to your family to breathe healthy, happy, and clean. Call Zero Res right now. Here's the number, 952-Z-E-R-O-R-E-Z, or go online at ZeroResMinnesota.com and say you want the rookie special. Hey, spelled forward or backwards, it's spelled the same. Zero Res. Not a Garage Logic town council member. Here's what you're missing. Council members, we have the ultimate practical joke to play on your, your significant other, your buddy, your brother, your friend, whatever. Go to the store, the music store, buy a cheap harmonica, and then get some zip ties in zip tie that harmonica on the undercarriage of the person's vehicle. Oh, sweet wow. Jesus. Yeah. You got to make sure the mouthpiece part is facing forward <laughs> and you get up to speed and that thing starts singing and it will drive them crazy. You should have done this to Joe. I know. I sent it to him. I was so excited that I sent it to Suits right away and then I'm going, oh, damn it, I should have sent it to Paul. <laughs> Go behind the scenes of Garage Logic with unfiltered audio and video access, invites to exclusive events, an emailed newsletter from the mayor himself, and more by signing up at garagelogic.com. 
there's a new way to level up your sports watching experience. Join over a million fans across 33 states who got in the game last year by making picks on Underdog. You can win up to 1,000 times your money just by choosing higher or lower on your favorite player's stats like touchdowns, passing, yards, and more. I find it easy and fun to use while rooting for my favorite players. Making picks on Underdog is straightforward. Signing up even easier. Just head over to Underdog Simple to use mobile app or underdogfantasy.com. Sign up with the promo code GarageLogic and Underdog will give you a free pick to use on your first cash pick entry, plus up to $1,000 in bonus cash when you deposit. That's Underdog Fantasy promo code GarageLogic to claim your new customer special of a free pick and your deposit offer. Must be 18 plus, 19 plus in Alabama and Nebraska, 19 plus in Colorado for some games, 21 plus in Massachusetts and Arizona, and present in a state where Underdog Fantasy operates. Terms apply. Void in Colorado. Concerned with your play? Call 1-800-GAMBLER or visit www.ncpgambling.org in Arizona, 1-800-NEXT-STEP, 1-800-639-8783, or text NEXT STEP to 53342. In New York, call the 24-7 HOPE line at 1-877-8-HOPE-NY or text HOPE-NY 467-369. North American Banking Company brings you more of this particular best of Garage Logic. Here is Frank Caliendo. Yeah. Greatest line ever. Oh, Greatest still. Greatest wonderful insult. Just Frank, remember you guys had a uh, Dueling Morgan, Morgan Freeman, Freeman, off. Freeman Oh, yes. I remember. Wow, that's pretty. That's gotten better as well. I do the old. <laughs> I do the old Morgan Freeman. You do the... Uh, the good one. Back to the, <laughs> the truth of the matter is, no, that's quite. I, I Sing remember. The song, Sonny. Well, I remember way back when you were not anywhere near that level. <laughs> but I am working on it. I am the Shawshank Morgan Freeman. Well, not right there. You're not Sonny. <laughs> Where Swing and a miss, man. Where is red? You, you had it. You should have stopped. <laughs> Can you teach her to do Biden? Uh, I have not folks. even tried Biden. Here's, I, well, here's, here's how you Watch start. Him. Hold your nose. Watch him. Hold your nose. Folks. Folks, why was your bad beggar's crap press of hand? Three, four, five hundred years ago. It's perfect. hard because he's he's he might be oh, 80, but he might as well be 110. Yeah. Because <laughs> And then he's had surgeries. You can tell he's had plastic surgery, right? Yeah. You can tell he's had a lot of stuff done. And he looks like he's probably had, because his nose is way narrower than it used okay. to be. So it's so, more of a nasal. So, yeah, it's op- yeah, I mean, folks, when I was young, man, I'd make a scrap oh, pencil. Oh. Man. <laughs> 30, 4, 5, 6, come on. So you got to push everything together. Yeah. No, it's like, I, this is how I describe it. If you ever type out a great email and you're like, oh, I am just flying here. You look up at it and you, you, you've typed for an hour. Yep. You look up, it's missing spaces and things are spelled red, wrong. Red, red, red squiggly red. lines yeah. That's everywhere. Joe Biden. <laughs> <laughs> yes. You're so 100% like, right. Super califragilistic <laughs> expialidocious, quite frankly. That's even Tremendous. though the sound of it. Something great. And then by uh, uh, Obama would be super uh, califragilistic expialidocious. Wow. Ah, that's a long word I can't do. And then Biden is super califragilistic. <laughs> Come on. Come on. Folks, Come on. What are we doing? Listen. Folks. Folks. This is the folks. Truth. This is the this truth. no joke. I'm not joking here. I'm not joking. <laughs> I'm napping. I'm napping. Mm. Sleepy <laughs> Joe. Oh my so god! You do any females? No, no, I was never good at it. Yeah. So it was, yeah, I could do like a feminine type of voice, but yeah. it, I'm, I'm sure I could do a, what's her name? Uh, what's who's the who's the woman? Like you look like the Fourth of July. That woman. What's her? I could do it if I worked on it. Uh, I'm drawing a blank. Uh, she's in Clueless. She's also got the sh- the the, uh, the, uh, the hotel mo- the TV show that's big. Um, TV show. Uh, I'm drawing a I'm blank. I'm trying to think of Clueless. Uh, Frank, do you have any characters that are good, just made up? Direct. Yep. Thanks. Uh, made up characters. You know what I mean? Like Matthew, what's the guy you do that talks like this? That's, that's got Gil. The, that's yeah, Gil. Gil. Yeah, that Joe Mar guy. He doesn't get the hits anymore. That's right. Northern Minnesota, right yeah, there. Yeah. yeah. Oh, don't you know it? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I'm not even trying to do that now. Um, <laughs> Yeah, I do. I just throw them in little bits. I should do more of those things because that that that's what. A lot of times, those are people that you know that aren't famous, and you're kind of doing an impression, or you're taking their 
point of view, and you just—it's the same as an impression. You just have to do more Not setup. Yeah. You have to tell. You have to tell people. It's that you never see that. You know that type of person who does this and that and X and Because everyone can relate to right, someone like relate. that. Right. That's just what an impression yeah. is. You just don't have to set it up. Did you make right. your parents laugh? No. Really? No. Yeah, I made mean, some. Probably my mom. My dad was always trying to be. He's still alive, I think. Um, <laughs> He's always, you know, my dad likes to be the focus, so um, he's still, when I, he'll come to shows and he thinks we're Abbott and Costello. Um, (laughs) And you just say, dad, you're trying too hard. I I just go with it now. I used to fight it and now he he just, and he does the same lines all the time. Yeah. Oh, he's like, I thought I'd get better seats. It's the same. (laughs) He doesn't even come up with new stuff. He thinks it's. He's playing the hits. He thinks he's supposed to do that. Yeah. And I tell him don't, but he, you know, he comes comes to shows wearing shirts with a picture of me on them. Yeah. He goes, I'm Frank's dad. How you doing? And they give you his softball stats. <laughs> he doesn't even tell you that they're coming. He's like, went two for four today. And then, like, what are you talking about? My You're softball game. My You're softball game. Frank. Didn't Frank tell you about that? Didn't Frank tell you about my softball game? <laughs> my dad sent me a him running a 40-yard dash, which was literally about four yards after he had his knees done. Oh, yeah. And he's like, it's just hobbling. <laughs> <laughs> it was just like, and it was, he just, as soon as he got going to full speed, which was maybe half a mile an hour, yeah. he, he started slowing down. Yeah. I mean, he was just like, holy cow. Are they still in Wisconsin? Yeah. My parents are divorced oh, okay. um, because of me. Got but, it. <laughs> yeah, well. Were you class clown? No, I was real quiet. I was oh, totally, really? I got voted second funniest in my class. Kevin Hoops won it. What's Kevin doing now? I don't now? harbor any resentment. No, that's just like the the Michael Jordan on Twitter. Was it Super Seventy Sports? It had uh, something about you know you've achieved success, and it had a picture of Ty Johnson in freshman year in high school and Michael Jordan as best athletes. Hmm. It was, it was very, Will your dad go to the Milwaukee shows? He'll go to the seven. He's playing softball in uh, Vegas. So softball's a big deal with your father. Trust me, yeah, it's bigger than hmm. Major League Baseball. Yeah. It's slow uh, pitch? Uh, slow pitch, yeah. Well, I would hope so. He's got to be in his... Yeah, he's born in 42, so yeah. he's 81. Yeah. yeah. He'll be 81, 81 October 3rd. Yeah. Does your mom ever come to the shows? She does, yeah. She's she's quiet and just uh, sits there and enjoys. And yeah. She just wants me to do Columbo the whole time. Yeah. I kill you. Columbo. <laughs> With the eyes. Very nice. <laughs> we were talking about this before the show started, before you got your Frank. Talk about the, the reverence with which Acme holds in the in the comedy world, because I know a lot of comedians have Acme at their, oh, at yeah, the top of their it's, list. Oh, yeah, because it's one of those rooms where, because Lewis Lee doesn't book just based on, um, you know, popularity. He books like odd offbeat acts and stuff on purpose. He wants it to be art artsy. That's cool. Okay. So he does a mixture of big names up and coming. He, he's probably the most like he could probably have made more money over the years booking easy acts. You don't see a lot of TikTokers or anything like that that don't have an act. Nobody's coming to Acme. Right. They, he doesn't have them. He might have somebody if they can if they can actually do comedy, but he wouldn't. You know, a lot of a lot of these uh, places, and it's just it helps the business model. So nothing against it, um, but uh, you know, funny bones or improvs, they will have somebody who can't really do stand up, and it's an hour of basically meet and greet. But they're these kids are coming and paying a hundred and fifty dollars to see these people. Wow! So I went to a um, I went and saw. Do you know my cousin Chris Maddock? He's a local comedian. He's he hasn't I've left heard the their name, I think. I went and saw them at at some basement. Uh, there were four or five comics, and they were funnier than hell. Yeah, I don't. I mean, they're just talking about regular life, but people were splitting their guts. I mean, there's a lot of talented comedians yeah. out there. Yeah, but who knows? I don't know how they keep new material if you're doing it all the time. I can't imagine anything more difficult. Is it super competitive right now, Frank? It, my opinion is comedy has hit a height that's just absolutely wonderful now. There's so much comedy available uh, for consumers. But is it tough to get a gig? Not not really for me, but I don't really even try. I don't do much. I, I, but I'm out of it. I, I, I don't really. You said earlier you were, you were you kidding when you said you're almost retired? Yeah, I mean, I kind of, I just do it. You're only 49 I'm, years old. Yeah, but I I made a lot of money. <laughs> <laughs> and, he's, and he left California, so he's I not paying do taxes. Dr- and I don't do drugs or drink. Right. So I just got kids and a wife. Yeah. 
So Ooh. you were smart. Yeah, yeah, well, <laughs> partially. Yeah. What do you want to do? Different... She has Amazon, so there's more packages oh. coming to her. <laughs> I call it the H. Amazon Self Fulfillment yeah, Center. Yeah. Uh-huh. You walk into our foyer, <laughs> and there's just boxes. What's in there? I don't know. What do you mean you don't know? They all say Michelle on them. I, I, I know I ordered. It might have been late night. Yeah. Well, can you keep tabs on yourself? Right. Uh, what was it? What, what do you do? Do you want a different life? For no, the next I, 20, I just like being like my kids, and, and yeah. I go work when I want to. And yeah. I mean, one of the reasons I probably do an Acme is uh, Acme in some of these other rooms is to record a little bit and then put pieces out there um, mm, to yeah. sell some tickets in different places. Because people, young people, don't even know I do stand up. Yeah. So it's people our age; they all know me, but in sports audiences know me. But you know, up and coming audiences think I'm just this guy on TikTok who does impressions once in a while. How instrumental was your appearances here on the KQ <laughs> Morning Show years and oh, years huge. ago? Yeah, 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 big. I mean, that was uh, that was the first thing that when Tom had me on. It was the that was the thing that sold the, all the tickets the first time. Right, like, went through. That I was, specifically remember driving in the car. Listening to the Cakey Morning Show, I had no idea who you were. I thought Madden was on. With I him. it was Madden, and it was Al Pacino, and he was going back and forth. you would have thought both of them were in. Stu- it was, and that's why I think we said, "Hey, we should see if he'll come right. on." Yeah, and I remember you, you guys you, asking you me, and you're like, and "I know you do this. Would you ever do this?" I'm like, "Yeah." yeah. yeah. Were you I on? With, I hadn't heard it yet. So. Were you on with Tom this morning? Uh, yeah, I did Tom's podcast. Cool, yeah, cool. Yeah. 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 Have you ever worked with Bill Hader? It would be fun to hear you two doing Al Pacino's. Um, no, I haven't. But it, it, that that's uh, he's very good. I mean, he's he's excellent. Um, he does more of that uh, a little bit more of the yelly kind. Yeah, of, yeah, the, the, the outraged. Yeah, the, uh, my my Al started very quietly. You know, and then the surprise! Al. Here we go. <laughs> Whoa! God, it's just... How do you decide who you're going to go after? I mean, to develop. Uh, I used to be when I did it a lot. Uh, it was who's who, if sports people because that was the money maker. Who's doing commercials? Okay. Because if they're doing commercials, they're bigger than just sports. Sure. Mm-hmm. It's easy to do analysts because you just take uh, you know you just take the person and stick them outside of. You know, everyday life. John Madden making toast. <laughs> you got bread right here. You got a toaster over here. Which yeah. you know, you're getting up with toast because you got a toaster. I mean, it's in the name. You put the bread in, click it down, and then boom. I <laughs> mean, you don't have bread anymore. <laughs> uh, or uh, Belichick. Nobody uses. Yeah, the Bill Belichick and so. The Very press high. conference fire, you Bill. did with the houses catch fire all the time. Yeah. I'm not it's kidding. It's almost had shirts. me urinate my pants. It was so yeah. damn funny. Listen, that just happens. Uh, we're on to Cincinnati. <laughs> <laughs> and then the dog, the little dog at the end. Mr. Brady. Mr. Brady. That's yeah, right. Mr. Brady. Which turns out he has a little dog like that. Did you know that? No. no. Yeah, there's a. If you Google Bill Belichick and dog. The, the, I, like a couple years ago, I saw that he actually has. It's not the same. I had a Shih Tzu with me, but he, he's got like a terrier or something. <laughs> How careful did you have to be with NFL people, or didn't you were you were uh, beyond that? With in terms of what? I mean, like would Belichick get mad? Uh, I don't know. Yeah. I don't think he cares. He doesn't. I mean, it, why would he? Why would he worry? He's counting about Super Bowl that? rings. Yeah. The only person I've ever been. <clears throat> excuse me. The only person I ever was told, don't even try that. Was uh, Roger Goodell commissioner? Like, I was just going to say it's got to be the don't commissioner. Make, don't don't make fun of Goodell. There well, are is it even w- possible to do him? Oh, I think so. I think there's something, but I never really worked at it right. because it's only a single audience, and that's the only place that would really work. Right, is a Roger Goodell impression. Uh, and I, I've sat with uh, Goodell, and it, I actually did it was in, when the Super Bowl was here in Minnesota. Uh, I did an event here for the NFL owners, and uh, I, I remember. Goodell was up front, and uh, what was the joke? Um, it had something to do with, uh, uh, oh, I said, uh, I've been working on my Roger Goodell impression, and then it all got quiet, and I go, uh, but it's not ready yet. And then Roger Goodell stood up and went, just clapped. <laughs> it, was like, it was like Don Goodell. God, Don Goodello. I got to think a Super Bowl appearance Private for the owners had to be one hell of a payday. I when I payday, I was gonna. Th- I thought you were gonna say describe that room. Awful, really. They terrible. came to St. Tense. Paul, didn't they? It was in the at the Union Depot. In I don't St. remember Paul. where it was. I just remember it wasn't it was in hard. Minneapolis. It was hard because. 
they're all billionaires and right. nobody ever makes fun of them. Right. right. So you know, some of the stuff worked, some of it didn't. But I, I remember um, Gruden had just gotten that big contract and I was making fun of... Uh, oh, uh, Mark uh, Davis. Davis and uh, and uh, there was there were a couple things. Jerry Jones, I tried to go say hi to him, and he did one of those Seinfeld looking at his watches to <laughs> got to get out of here. You uh, could have you could have had a ball with Kraft. Yeah, uh, he's gotten himself in jam. Robert Kraft, Robert yeah. Kraft, yeah. he's in here. Yeah. Um, yeah, and I did. I, I've done stuff for the Patriots too. Um, I'm trying to think. It's so funny because it's hard to even mention things. Like you're like, uh, you're like, uh, isn't it great at Walmart? And they're like, don't mention Walmart. He owns the competitor. Oh, you know, you, yeah. it's like all oh that kind of stuff. God, I didn't even think of that. So yeah. you got to walk that yeah, tightrope with everything. Of, like the, the, these people own stuff. That's so. why I say I hope it was a hell of a payday. Because <laughs> you had oh, trust me, I wouldn't have done it had it not right, been. Right, right, right. <laughs> that's, that's basically, well, unless I'm doing a club, it's got, it's, if you look at my schedule, they're all clubs, that's because I want to go goof around. Right. And if it's something else, there's, like, there's stuff on my schedule that you don't see that's corporate events. Right. And that's what I do mostly. You're so going if, to Appleton, Wisconsin. Yeah. Well, it's a, that's Very kind small of a, town. Kind of a filler right before Milwaukee. Yeah. So I fly in to, I, now it's flying to Pittsburgh, and that was actually filling for something, but I have the, I had to move some stuff around uh, for some personal reasons. So now I got to go Pittsburgh, Chicago, uh, and then it's basically Chicago, Appleton, Milwaukee. Just to, it's all that's all the same right. area. Right. So uh, within a couple hours, few hours of each other. So. You ever been to Appleton? Yeah, yeah. Okay. I'm in a group in Waukesha. Yeah, just up uh, just up uh, 41. Yeah. Yeah, many times. Right on Lake Winnebago. Yeah, the the air park is right there, right by mm-hmm. Oshkosh, and mm-hmm. yeah, I've got friends that went to Oshkosh. I went to UW Milwaukee. So, that's have you ever walked a room, Frank? No, I've never been like that. I mean, that's. I mean, I've had people that didn't like me because they, you know, I go up and they know me from sports, and I start out with political characters just because it gets everybody yeah. involved as opposed to sports people only. You know. Yeah, if you do Stephen A. Smith. I'm ready to go here. I understand. You know, there's only a certain amount of the audience that's going to get that. Right. Um, and I wanted to play more generally, so I'll start out with the Trump Biden and just keep it even and just make fun of everybody. Right. But yeah. I have people when I'm doing Trump just get really, really mad. Yeah. I'm like, you You're don't not even say... listening to what I'm saying. Right. I'm not yeah. really ripping. I, you know. Yeah. I, in with Trump, to me, you don't even have to rip. He just he does enough stuff on his own. Right. Oh, he's hilarious. That's what some people love yeah. about him and what the other people hate about him. And mm-hmm. all you have to do is just do that kind of stuff and let people make their own judgments. <clears throat> The the way he puts emphasis on various words is hilarious. Uh, just yeah, well, everything people, about it's hilarious. Uh, well, a lot of people. That's that's people caught on to China. <laughs> <laughs> yes, China. Yeah. Have you gotten the good China, Matthew? I uh, put it away in the buffet. <clears throat> I'm trying to see see if I still have it. Who, who is that? That, who is that, that was. Yeah, you know what? You are trying, Alec Baldwin. I'm trying. I'm trying, trying hard. Hard. It's like a peanut butter and jelly sandwich, which you eat a lot. You've got a, a, lot, you've got a, a lot, lot, a lot. Of people Go from a eat. lot. A lot of people. A eat. lot of people like ladders to <laughs> climb. They climb up. Yeah, a tremendous amount of people. Some of the best people. I, listen, there's a lot of people. There are a lot of rungs. And I do. I know. And I know. I know. It's very. You got to be secure. You have to be very secure. Sometimes you have to be soft. Soft. And sometimes hard. Hard. <laughs> Like an egg, <laughs> I a hard-boiled egg. egg Mr. Mr. President, which is orange in the middle. The man that sits Just across the table often gets criticized for not being on board. Could you please uh, convince Mr. Sushri why he should be on board the Trump train? Well, oh. listen, it's a tremendous train. It's a great train, and a lot of people, <laughs> a lot of people are not on the tracks. And if you can't find your way, you have to understand there's a lot of problems, and people don't love this country. And I, I know you love this country. You just might love it incorrectly. <laughs> <laughs> and if we can get you to understand how to correctly love, and a lot of people incorrectly love, you can see it happen. It happens in lots of different places. NBC used to do a show about it. <laughs> you have to have proper love. <laughs> And if a guy named Hanson shows up, you know it's not the band. It's a guy who's offering you cookies. <laughs> oh, my God. oh, the uh, what you're what you're capturing so well, of course, is his uh, 
his his exaggerations. He that just everything's goes spectacular. Off. There you everything's go. beautiful. There you it's go. P.T. Barnum. Yeah. P.T. Barnum. I say P.T. Barnum. Yeah. I say he's yeah. the, you know, Biden's your grandpa. Right. Um, and Trump's your uncle that you're not supposed to be around for too long. Right. right. Uh, so it's like, are you going to go with Grandpa Biden? You, uh, that's fine. Just don't let him drive at night. Right. And then uh, Uncle Trump, you just he, he took you to the bar last time. You can't. Yeah. You're only 16. You can't right. do that. Right. So. Oh. It's beautiful. Damn. Quite frankly. Website? What's your website? Uh, f- for tickets, it's frankonstage.com, which okay. is just a part of frankcaliendo.com. Yep. Okay, frankcaliendo.com. Oh, man. I, I, I don't know. I coughed a second ago, and I got to pee really bad now. <laughs> and your <laughs> podcast. You, What's uh, your podcast? Is this a pee cast? Is this a pee cast? Yes. Yeah. Do you, you want to take a leak? leak? Yeah, he's got to go. I, is there a bathroom right around here? I mean, yeah. I can take a... I can, Do you need to oh, take a totally. leak? A leak. A lot of people. A lot of leaking. Take a, leak. a lot of leak. Now you sound like uh, no. uh, the guy who does Dr. Evil. Uh, oh, that's... I did a thing about that. <laughs> yeah. I, I, you know what? Let me pee, and I'll come back, and I'll do that. All right. Where's the bathroom? Take a break. Hit the sounder. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Hit the sounder. Please, 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 right now, please. No, you're rolling. Okay, oh, we're rolling. No, go ahead, go oh, ahead, go ahead. That was go awesome. Into the women's room. Please, not. Going I know. To. I know you're not. No, going listen, to. Though, oh, listen to this. I forgot Joe. you could In stop. In the middle That's stall, okay. there is a. Were you fem- getting? Did you get that whole thing? Oh yeah, got <laughs> tremendous because it was very good. There's a female <laughs> urinal. A female urinal? In the middle stall in the ladies' room. <laughs> of course that there is. That is on the... Cost, hover, hover ahead of its time. Cost, ahead oh, of its oh, time. Yes. <laughs> Telling so the future. <laughs> Telling the future. Telling the future. only a 1970s bathroom can. <laughs> <laughs> Would we like to do some upgrades to the bathroom? They said, no, no, thank you. There's no need to. Yeah, because we're still keeping America great where it was with the powder blue urinals. We, will, we, won't, urinals. Let them, we won't let them remodel because it's so awesome. Oh, it's just a lot, of, a lot of people blip, blip. like to tinkle standing up, especially women and bears. I believe bears are standing tinklers. And I'm not talking about the guys in the magazine with the chains on them. No, no. I'm talking about a different type of bear. So, all right. So, people said to me, so the three voices that are actually fairly close are Robert Downey Jr. Yes. Robert Downey Jr., if you do this, you just have to belch out words. If you slow it down and raise the pitch, it becomes Dr. Frickin' Evil. That's right. Now, if you take Dr. Evil and you make it a little bit softer... Quite frankly, yeah. throw me a freaking bone here, please. It's Donald Trump. Yes. <laughs> That's a morph. That's a morph. morph. Well, what's well, how Try we factor. stumbled uh, was on Monday when you. I, I don't know if you were reacting to people's tweets, but someone had asked you to do Bat Trump. Oh, that's actually old. I reposted it. Oh, you reposted it. That's yeah, why. But, but oh my but god, it was, it was funny. Bat Trump is. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, that's uh, Gotham City. Uh, God, I'm going to make Gotham great again. A lot of people, all the bad guys, Insane Bane, Sleepy Joker, Nancy Pelosi. <laughs> like people love that Nancy Pelosi doesn't even have. Yeah, yeah no, she's right. just Nancy Pelosi. It's just Nancy Pelosi. But you could, you could do Trump. For anybody, couldn't you? You could turn anyone into Trump. Oh yeah, yeah. With I've those done that. kind of superlatives and adjectives. Oh, I've done Trump as a priest. Yes. Oh, well, let me hear Trump as a priest. He usually doesn't even know what Easter is. Right. <laughs> well, a lot, a lot of people, a lot of people, true. Bless me, Father, for I've sinned. It's been three weeks since right. my last confession. Well, a lot of people have been coming to confession. It's very busy here, so it's hard to get a time. <laughs> I know, and you might have tried to get a time in the confessional. I'm yeah. opening up the tiny little door so I can see you with my eyes. <laughs> Tell me your sins. You do it. I do that. That's a tremendous sin. What a sin. <laughs> probably, probably one of the best sins I've ever heard. But listen, I've done a lot worse. I myself, I've, I can top yeah. that. Uh, all right, say five Hail Marys and to our fathers. Right. And we'll see you on uh, Christmas. Cheester. Yeah. Cheester. Cheester. All right. Uh, which was Christ's birthday. Oh. Who's the uh, other guy? J.L. J.L. Coven. Oh, he's, just, he's great. He's very good. Yeah. There's a lot of great. Trumps yeah, but now. He's, he's. You're pretty good. 
Yeah, I know, but he's specializing. There's a lot of people that specialize in it now. The guy on SNL is real good. Yeah, um, he is very good. The yeah. um, you know, there's there's so many people. I didn't think Alec Bald Alec Baldwin's came off so angry all the yeah. time. Yeah, I didn't like it too. at all. It wasn't but fun. What, what you guys who are good at it are capturing is his uh, is his just his. The what non sequitur. Yeah. The, well, not only the non sequitur, but how much everything is fantastic. Yeah. Thank you, Joe. Everything's Thank you. great. I appreciate that. I say yeah. he's <laughs> used the superlatives with superlatives. superlatives. His, is it, it's tremendously tremendous. Yes, absolutely. Fantastically fantastic. <laughs> <laughs> but it only is because of him. Well, I it's, and that's because I did it. Yes. yes <laughs> if I hadn't did. done it, you probably wouldn't yes, have heard about you. it. I've got him down to three words. I do this mag. This is probably, quite frankly. Mm-hmm. You know, it's like I could just get anything across. It's like a group. And Guardians of the Galaxy. <laughs> probably, quite frankly, quite frankly, probably, probably, quite frankly, probably, quite frankly, probably, probably, quite frankly, probably, quite frankly, probably, quite frankly, probably. See, you're welcome. Oh, God. Do you think? Do you think Rook has a shot at this? Yeah, yeah uh, I, think I think so. you're close. You just have to. You Gotta just have to get it, it so it keeps rolling. Right. That's how it works. Is you just uh, you do it over and over. I can't over get again. him to practice. He should drive around doing it. Yeah, I'm I mean, not that's on the how clock. I, the car is the car is where I do, yeah, yeah, practice the most. I don't drive as much anymore. So that when I was doing colleges, going from place to place, that's when I worked on a lot of impressions. And there's something about doing it as a second thing. You're watching. You know, you're paying attention to driving. You're doing it mm-hmm. in the back of your head. I think that would always work for me. Mm-hmm. So you're just um, reading license plates and billboards and things like that, basically. Uh, yeah, or just talking to myself, okay. just to, to doing that, but you're doing something, so you're not, so you're just ingraining it in you as you're doing it, as you're doing something else. So it's just, it's, but you're working on your craft the entire time. Yeah, you're working is, on it. Is, is but there someone you're working on now that isn't? That, uh, that isn't in your mix. I'm trying to think. There's, I mean, there's always a lot that I. And it's, it just depends on. Uh, uh, there, there's some that are close that I have to work on to get them even there because they aren't to muscle memory yet. Um, there, Leonardo DiCaprio is one that's like when you're doing like the uh, Wolf of Wall Street kind of voice. Sure. That, that uh, five years ago when I first came to Stratton Oakmont, yeah. you know, that kind of thing. <laughs> there's John Malkovich. Um, yeah. I believe I'm telling you. Um, there's always you those. do Jeff Bridges. Uh, I that was going to turn into Jesse the Body. Yeah, uh, I I it's I've taken. never been able to do it, but I know where it is, and yeah. I know people who do it, so yeah. I tend to not because okay. they do a. There's a couple people that do. Uh, Piat Michael does one. Um and uh, Ross Marquand does a great one. So there's people who, d- when people do them, I'm like, ah, I don't know. I feel like it's already being done. Right. So if I think of it before I've seen them do it, I tend to I'm not care. But if I see somebody doing it, I'm like, ah, I don't really. But that's not what everybody else does. Everybody else just says, oh, somebody's doing that. I'm going to do that too. Yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah. How have you kept a level of sanity with your success? It sounds like you held on to your money. You're, again, you're not buying so drugs and you're you know drinking stuff. You're like not that. divorced yet. <laughs> okay, <laughs> um, that's an announcement on Thursday. Yeah, I haven't night. seen the latest credit card statement. <laughs> uh, I don't know. I just because uh, so, so many just go off the. Yeah, I never got pet. that famous to be like that though. I was fairly famous when my TV show was out, and I just. I was always like, I want to do one job and try and do it as well as I can. And then you're always fighting against so many things. And, you right. know, you guys know what that's like in your world, too. So it's the same way. Where there's always t- thousands of opinions in suits mm-hmm. telling you how to do stuff that you've done your entire life to get oh, there. Oh, boy. Yeah. And um, so I, I, to me, it was just I, I just I, I, I didn't try to do five other things. I never get, I, you know, I see that and everybody's trying to get ahead and get to the next thing, whatever. And I'm like, ah, I just can't. It's just never been my no. my style. How old are your kids? No idea. <laughs> <laughs> Perfect answer. 17-year-old <laughs> uh, junior in high school is my daughter, or senior in high school is my daughter. My son is 19 and a sophomore, or a, yeah, sophomore at ASU. Does he do any impressions? They can both do them. Really? They don't, they don't really try, but right. they, they can, yeah. yeah. They, they don't want to be too much like me. Right. They want to be better. Right. Well, no, they just kind of do their own thing. My daughter wants to be in PR and stuff like that's mm-hmm. what she likes. She likes the Hollywood thing, but she likes behind the scenes and uh, promoting that type of stuff. She'd be great, like as a, as a, you know, like a big party promoter, mm-hmm. like she, international businesswoman type of thing. My son is in finance and that type of stuff. He'll be good at, I think. Um, 
just doing business. Mm-hmm. I mean, he's he'll, he'll end up, I think, being a wheeler and dealer type of mm-hmm. thing. He sells shoes online and oh, yeah. he does that kind of stuff. So. Well, he'll take care of you in your old age. Uh, he'll I'm, take I'm, care of your money. Yeah, I got it all set up. So yeah. You'll start showing up to his business yeah. meetings talking right. about your softball game. Yeah, right? Yeah. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> if I ever do that, just <laughs> hit me with the softball in the head. <laughs> See, I've never wanted attention. My dad is like a big atten- He just wants attention all the time. What do you do for a living? Oh, uh, he was a sales rep. Yeah. Professional softball player. Yeah, professional yeah. softball player. Eddie Feiner. Yes. Yeah, so, um, yeah, I. it's just the way – I'm not wired that way. Yeah. I just did it because it worked, and it was – what else was I going to do? Mm-hmm. That was really it. You, know, you weren't qualified of, for anything else. Yeah. <laughs> right. I, I mean, I went to school for broadcast journalism, but – I didn't really want to be the one asking the questions. I would rather be the one sitting in the chair on Leno. And that's mm-hmm. part of my problem is that's all I ever wanted to do to aspire to was just be a guest on a talk show. Mm-hmm. So I did that fairly early and I was happy and just making enough money and selling tickets here and there. And just, do the, I, you know, I tried to do the podcast thing and I just, I can't get myself to do something and talk. I just don't feel like my opinion, opinion is that important on so mm-hmm. many things. Mm-hmm. If you have a camaraderie in a group, it becomes more fun. So there's always something with that. But to me, just to be a person, I, I just don't have enough that I care about to try. And, and then there's also the fear factor of if I say something somebody's going to take out of context nowadays. It's, mm-hmm. sure. That's not my – that's not what my, my – my brand is pretty safe. So – you know, even some of the stuff I talked to, I hear a little bit, a little bit outside the box, maybe, but whatever. You got to do a little bits here and there. But you stay away from colleges. Yeah, I could never do that. Right. I mean, one, they wouldn't get what I was doing. Two, right. they did. Well, oh, it's Grandpa Frank here. Right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. He's almost fifty. He's almost fifty. Well, tonight and tomorrow, Acme. I'm sure you'll have a great. Great house. Oh, yeah. It'll be fun. That's, yeah. Tomorrow might be sold out already. So today's, like I said, 20 tickets away. You want to save your voice for tonight? Yeah, I do. I appreciate it. <laughs> All right. Thank, Thank you, you, Frank. It's going to be the best. A lot of people are coming to see. It's going to be spectacular. <laughs> Spectacularly. <laughs> Spectacular. Specta- a lot of people like Frank. That's a good. Lot. Yeah. A lot of people like Frank. A lot, the problem with Frank when you leave is Rook will keep trying it and he'll slip into 40 yeah, different right. voices. Yeah, so that's what Iranian and a Russian and Bulgarian. A lot of people like Frank. You know, <laughs> do what now? I always I find that more fun, though, because yeah. the people always want me to stay in character for like yeah. 30 minutes. I'm like, I have no interest. But just so you know that your line lives in infamy on this show is you're doing a great voice. Yeah. I just don't know what yeah, it is. Do. Every time <laughs> I do anything, they say you're doing a great, you're doing someone. We just don't we know. We just don't is. know who. <laughs> what yeah. is doing the Morgan? Uh, yeah, that's that is incredible. Incredibly uh, vague. <laughs> yeah. Leaves it wide open. Yeah. Wide open. Wide open. Thanks, Frankie. All right, guys. Thank you. Appreciate it. Rolling? Yeah, we are now. <laughs> How about a liner, Mr. President? Oh. Come on. You can do Come it. Come on. You Come can on. do it. Come on. It's tremendous. <laughs> He knows what button to hit every time the podcast is on. Joe well, Sushir. I can't well, say it, Joe Sushir. Uh, yeah. How would he say it? A lot of people have... like Joe Sushir. Gentlemen, would you like to take a bet? The over-under on the remaining portion of the day, Rookie is going to be doing this. I, I expect it in like... perfect by Monday. Yep. I'm going to give you until He's Monday. He's giving you the yeah. building blocks. I like perfection. Perfection is good. Tremendous. Course, remember this part. Tremendous. Yeah, and the I lips. Like, I like the lips. Perfection. The D and the T. But don't let your Bulgarian stuff sneak in there. This also can come <laughs> in. See, that happens. <laughs> this is this is Yuri Stenghoff. He tried to do Trump. Oh, it tremendous. Yeah, I like a lot of people like tremendous. You know, that before we get to John, uh, I know it's not funny, but I, I just I get so disappointed to hear uh, the uh, the the Twin Cities Marathon now this weekend. Yeah, yeah. they're yeah. they're warning these runners. Oh, it's going to be uh, you're going to be in critical heat. And what they've never run when it's eighty degrees before. Right. You know yeah. what they should warn them. I, I took a gander at the map. That's a long damn way. That's a half a day's drive if you're in the, if you're in Royce's convertible. Right. The reason, though, I asked a former marathon runner about this very thing. I think it stems from lawsuits. 
it, it absolves them of B any type as of in litigation. B as, as in S. No, but I think that I'm just answering your question. I think that's why. So they do what? It. A runner passes out and then sues the organizers. Well, Jess ran the, the the last time she ran Duluth. It was when Duluth had it was really really warm and people were dropping like flies. And I think that's part of the reason why because some people maybe sued the organization. I have no idea. The record for the marathon day, which is October 1st, this Sunday, was 87 degrees. That was in 1897. <laughs> I don't think they had now it they, back if they, ha- they didn't have a marathon uh, in 1974, might have been a year or two before the marathon. Okay. But it was 24 degrees on October 1st, 1974. That was cold? A cold <laughs> run? A run that was cold? Not tremendous, but cold. Why don't they quit? Don't these people know you can quit? You don't have to finish. Right. right. You shut it. I, I'd shut it down before you got to Lake of the Well, Isles. Janice Borman takes days to complete it. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Yeah. The smoking marathon. Janice, yeah. Yeah. We haven't heard from her in a while. No, maybe this yeah. year. Yeah. Let's not. That'll confuse it even more. Right. Here, here's John Janice. Hyatt. How was the, uh, how was the run? All the effing voices in my head. It was tremendous. I am a um, Mormon. It is tremendous, Janice. I am Janice. Yes. Before we go to John yeah. uh, Such, I've oh, got what? a very important question. We tried to address this on Krabby, and we didn't get an answer. I'm hoping you can help me. A man steals a $100 bill from a store's register. He then buys $70 worth of goods at that store using the $100 bill. He gets back $30 change. How much money did the store lose? Uh, $200. <laughs> That's what we didn't no. have that answer. No. All the answers that was Chris, the one we no, came up with. Started with 200 bucks. No. He lost 100. No. He stole 100. <laughs> yeah. Bought $70 worth of stuff. Uh-huh. And then got, got 30 bucks in change. He lost 30. No, because you also gain you also lost the $70 in value of $200. Damn, Joe might be right. Would it wouldn't it be 170? That's it would be I, well, I was going to guess 170, but I, now that Joe says 200, that Yeah, might but be they right. also coughed him up a 30. So they the actually drawer. lost 130 out of the drawer and $70 worth of merchandise, so it's 200. Yeah, but 200 what if bucks? the merchandise is 50% markup? You just trust the old marriage. That's 35, math, all right? But they but he gave them 70 back. But it was their 70 to begin the, with. But it was their 70 know, yeah. to begin with. So there's a hundred. Now I'm confused again. It's two hundred dollars. They no, lost two hundred no, bucks. No, it's not. No, no, it's a hundred. It's a hundred. <laughs> right? If a ball and a bat cost a buck <laughs> ten. Yeah, I still don't get that one. What is the answer? I have no idea. That's why I. You am. son of a. <laughs> I have no idea. I really don't. Where did you hear this? Uh, on the internet. Oh. Then the third. Then the store is down thirty Hold because on. he bought seventy bucks Man, worth of stuff. Stole. But it's seventy bucks worth of stuff. So now they're down thirty plus seventy. But the is question 100. is, how much money? It's a hundred bucks. Store. It's a hundred bucks, right, Chris? It's a hundred right, bucks. Yeah, bucks. That's what I'm coming up with too. But but you got to count the goods as money because he gave the hundred dollar bill back. Right. But then. It, Got thirty bucks in change and got seventy dollars worth of merchandise. So the answer so it's is a hundred bucks, not two hundred. It's a hundred because the hundred dollar bill went back into the till, Joe. No, it did uh, not. Yep, sure. Seventy of it came back to the till, but then mm-hmm. he got thirty dollars in change. No, a hundred went. In, the hundred dollars he stole went back into the till. Thirty <laughs> then was removed. Yeah, and he got seventy worth of okay, merchandise. Okay, they lost thirty bucks. Nope, 100. No, they lost 100. Either. 100. Here's John Hyde in the newsroom. <laughs> Thank you, Joe. I appreciate that. Kenny should go uh, out and shoot himself Matt, in the foot. Matthew, what happened? Where, where'd you go? You he's disappeared. on his phone. I'm he's texting that to someone. Looking. Oh, oh, he's sending that one to his son. <laughs> yes. Yeah, figure this out. Who's in Germany? Right Who's in Germany right now? Yeah. <laughs> it's 100 bucks. That's my answer. It's 100 bucks. All right. Here we before go. We, uh, before we start news, a sports note for uh, folks my age, Brooks Robinson, the Baltimore Orioles Hall of Famer, who is perhaps the finest third baseman in baseball history, died yesterday. 
yesterday at his home in Owings Mills, a suburb of Baltimore. He was 86. His longtime friend and agent, Diane Hawk, said the cause was coronary disease. He played 23 seasons with the Orioles from 1955 to 1977, became known as the human vacuum cleaner for his ability to snare pretty much anything in his way. He won 16 consecutive Gold Glove Awards as the American League's uh, leading fielder third base. Well, known for his fielding, Robinson, uh, not a bad offensive player either. He had 2,848 hits in his career, 268 home runs, career batting average of 267. He was the MVP of the American League in 1964 when he hit 28 homers, had 118 RBIs, and batted 317 all career highs. During his time with the Orioles, the Orioles won four American League pennants and two World Series. I'm not an autograph guy. I've got uh, Mock. I might have. Bob Hope. I think I have Kirby Puckett. Bob Hope. Oh uh, yeah, I got Joe DiMaggio. Uh, you have Roof. No. Thanks. I was gonna do it too, Chris. But Brooks, I got Brooks, <laughs> and I, I said to Mock, "Give me a ball." I ran over to the Baltimore dugout late summer of his final year, and he signed it. I took a picture of it and put it on the wow on the tweet. Isn't nice. that isn't that breaking the rules though? We I don't don't hear. Press. Uh, yeah, wait a minute. Wait a minute. That's why I didn't do it much. Yeah. Did you know? Did, was it well known? It was his last year. I think it was. Yeah. So that's why you did it. Yeah. Oh, that's yeah. cool, Joe. He was uh, he was called the human vacuum cleaner. Mm-hmm. A lot of people like to break rules. Mm-hmm. Uh, Brooks, a lot of hits, a lot of hits for Brooks. There you go. That's. I think you hit, nailed it. That wasn't with bad, the yeah. help of my friend Frank Caliendo. Cali, Caliendo. Caliendo. A lot of people like Do. Frank. A lot of people like Frank. You mean not so much? <laughs> Me, not too much. Uh, Kenny, the reason he was referred to as the human vacuum cleaner, Brooks could pick it. Mm-hmm. You, you yeah. couldn't get anything by him. You try by to run not. by him, he'll get you. Remember Mark Belanger? Sure, yeah. Was Brooks a shortstop? Yep. I saw, uh, you know how they uh, were screwing around before a game and guys are hitting balls and then sometimes the infielders are fielding them. A ball mm-hmm. went way over Belanger's head. He threw his glove up and got the ball. The ball went right Beautiful. in his glove. Wow, that's cool. Yeah. Uh, by the way, Jennifer Coolidge was the actress. Who's oh, yeah. who's Jennifer everyone. Coolidge. That's yeah. it. Uh, thankful for the town council access. This is all on Twitter. Who's Jennifer Best, Coolidge? The actress we were minutes. thinking of. Best, of what show? Um, Clueless. Uh, Clueless. She was oh. um, but in the hotel she, show. Wasn't she also in uh, the movie uh... Clueless? Yes, a great movie. <laughs> show uh, Pride of Show, Best of Best Show, in show. Best in Show. Best in oh, show. was she? Yeah. Uh, okay. Best last sixty minutes spent, no question. Yeah, Go town ahead. council, you got paid today. Yes. Uh, in news, in court 70, documents, seventy dollars in merchandise, thirty in cash. Yeah, hundred bucks. Hundred bucks. Okay. <laughs> got that, Joe? Two hundred. Oh, hundred bucks. Hundred dollars. Hundred. <laughs> Can't A use lot it. of money. Troublemaker. My favorite part of Frank being here was when he talked about practicing when he was driving, because you can just see him driving down the yes. highway. Going, you know, mm-hmm. Hey, it's Caliendo again, driving yeah, down the cut, highway. Cut me off. <laughs> <laughs> My personal favorite was when he said he's semi-retired, unlike other people. Yeah, How like, do you know that? <laughs> <laughs> he got the old number one salute from the mayor. Yeah. <laughs> yep. <laughs> In news, in court documents filed Monday, the Hennepin County Attorney's Office said it will seek an aggravated sentence for Derek Thompson, the driver in that June crash that killed five people. The Attorney's Office, the prosecutor in the case, listed three reasons for the upward sentencing departure. One, Thompson has a previous conviction for a similar offense. Two, Thompson didn't try to help the victims or alert medical personnel about the injuries prior to fleeing the scene. And three, Thompson's offense is worse than the typical offense. His driving conduct represented a greater than normal danger to others and his conduct more serious than the conduct usually seen in this type of case. As previously reported, Derek Thompson was arrested and charged in connection with the high-speed crash that killed five women, faces 10 counts of criminal vehicular homicide, as well as federal charges for legal possession of fentanyl and a firearm. He had a previous convention of a 2018 uh, conviction, excuse me, of a 2018 hit and run in Montecito, California that injured a woman. He received an eight-year sentence for that incident in 2020, was released from prison in January after earning credit for good conduct. 
Uh, Thompson, uh, as we've noted in the past, is the son of former state representative John Thompson. Who we haven't heard from in this no. case. It's weird. It's the, uh, That's weird. 36-year-old man found unresponsive in his bed at the Hennepin County Jail on Tuesday after an apparent medical incident, later pronounced dead at the Hennepin County Medical Center. It was the second in-custody death at the jail this month. The 21-year-old man died September 18th after what the Sheriff's Office also called a medical incident. In this latest incident, the Sheriff's Office said medical aid was immediately rendered by staff, paramedics, and fire department personnel. That aid continued while he was being transported to the hospital. Sheriff's Office said the man's name and cause of death will be released by the Hennepin County Medical Examiner. Twin Cities-based Target is closing nine stores in major cities across four states, saying theft and organized retail crime have made the environment unsafe for staff and customers and unsustainable for business. The big box chain, part of a wave of retailers, both large and small, that say they're struggling to contain store crimes that have hurt their bottom lines. The store's Target plans to close will shut the doors October 21st. The stores include the East Harlem location in New York City, two locations in Seattle, three in Portland, and three in San Francisco and Oakland. Yes, sir. And it won't help a thing. I think they're doing what they have to do, but... The problem is, especially in Portland, Seattle, and San Francisco, we're seeing it here, you are not prosecuting these criminals. There's, there's well, no in incentive. fact, they're passing laws in California to let you steal a certain amount of, of merchandise. And not to mention that basically what will happen is that the people that would have stolen the merchandise from this short, let's say it's $100 worth. Okay. And you bring 30 <laughs> back. No, they're just going to go to a different store. Right. Th- this this means nothing. Again, I don't blame them, but it's not going to cure the problem. The problem is the uh, people in the uh, attorney's offices right. Right. and the judges. And they're just saying, here's your number. You can steal this amount of merchandise yeah. and not, and that, it's $100, right? Yeah. Okay. But these are organized theft rings, correct? So where are these yeah. goods going? And uh, are the goods going to someone that's so powerful that they have influence over the lawmakers and the prosecutors? You know, I like to look at the big conspiracy picture. Yeah, the ones I've witnessed have nothing to do with being uh, organized. I've okay. Just seen it. Most of the larger retail stores, that is what's happening, though, yeah. especially mm-hmm. if they're if they're stealing bigger, bigger items. Mm-hmm. Uh, they're going to an organization which ends up reselling and basically they're paid employees, which if you think about yeah. it is a little odd. You got a paid employer walking into a store, grabbing something and leaving. Yeah, that, that footage that they keep showing over and over of all these kids, there's got to be, I don't know, 15 of them all dressed in black, just tearing ass out of the store with arms full of goods. Yeah. Arms I think if I think if you're in the yeah, store and yeah. that happens, you sh- the other customers should be able to beat the crap out of them. I would advise against. It. Yeah, uh, Joe against I, I, fifteen I youth. Against I'm thinking. Pull out your gun and just say freeze, nah, uh, no, mother trucker. No, I'm just gonna no. In other news, uh, national. Although, national would it be tempting? Would it be tempting to grab a handful of goods yourself and run out? I would go up to them and grab and steal from them. And see Out in the parking like lot. Say, yeah. how does it? How does it feel? Huh? How's it feel, pal? How's it feel, buddy? Yeah. I'd like to get a candy bar. A lot of people like it. to steal. Yeah. <laughs> Wait, was that you trying to do Trump? Yeah. Mm, pretty oh, good. No. Please don't <laughs> now, make Matthew, this. Really don't bad. make this. <laughs> I've noticed now your crutch now, Matthew, is a lot of people. Yeah. It helps me get into it. I've got to find it another does. word. It but, does. Um, but it's a good ramp up. Yeah. A ruling by, a, a speaking of Donald Trump, a ruling by a New York judge that Trump had committed Why fraud. Why speaking of me right now? <laughs> leaving the fate of his business empire dangling in uncertainty was, according to legal experts, a devastating blow for the former president. If not successfully appealed, the decision will revoke the Trump Organization's business certificates. That is, the corporate licenses held by Trump, his family, the Trump Organization, and the LLCs it has, preventing the 77-year-old from conducting business in New York until the revocation would be rescinded. Mr. President, I heard the word dangling. Uh, Is it true that you are, in fact, dangling? When I dangle, you will know it. And it is a very important art to dangle. You, You spin a clock, wait. a clockwise motion. What? Wait, what? Whoa! And we call this helicopter. <laughs> not, 
Not a lot of people are talented enough to helicopter. There goes there goes an Iranian again. Yet, yet they try. Helicopter? It is an art. Yeah, Mr. President, uh, Stormy you Daniels. You do it, you, Donald? That's not perfect. Yeah. I know. Stormy Daniels, Mr. President, said you, you couldn't dangle, if you know what I'm saying. The angle of the dangle was not yeah. there. Oh, We're thinking was, uh, was nothing, uh, oh, nothing Mr. Thimble from right. what we've heard. Uh, <laughs> Many times I have tried, but not succeeded. <laughs> it is difficult. Uh, no, he would ex- never admit defeat. No, God, no. no. Experts... Is, Depending on your perspective, I have the greatest yeah. anatomy. He would fine. He would blame that on Stormy for yeah. being too. Uh, Stormy too has, yes. has poor That's eyesight. Good point. Her sight uh, is very poor. Very poor. There you go again. Very that's poor. That, yeah, that was that's, that, that's, that's that. Bulgarian again. Hey, Rome wasn't made in one day. I that's know, right. I know. <laughs> but I will tell you, I am putting in for an extra hour of work. For this podcast, no. you've been leaning on me <laughs> quite hard. <laughs> One extra hour. <clears throat> Experts told Business Inside of the ruling amounts. A lot of work today. Experts told Business Inside of the ruling amounts to a corporate death penalty. Former financial crimes prosecutor John Moscow said it means you are no longer a company and the judge is appointing someone to take over your assets and distribute them as the court sees fit. Manhattan Supreme Court Justice Arthur Engerin ruled that the businessman greatly exaggerated the value of his wealth to secure favorable terms with banks, which ultimately led him to his worldwide fame. Last night... I was doing the stray cat strut. It, tremendous walk. Hmm. See, I, I see a bit already. I'll just play it. You sing it, Mr. Got President. It. Got it. Yes, I got you on that one. Large crowds, mostly consisting of juveniles, looted multiple stores and damaged property across Philadelphia last night. It all started around 8 o'clock when officials said police started getting calls that large crowds were making their way into Center City. Among the stores looted were the Foot Locker and the Apple Store near 15th and Chestnut Streets and a Lululemon store in the area. Acting Police Commissioner John Stanford said Tuesday night's looting had nothing to do with peaceful protests that took place earlier in the day after charges were dismissed missed against a police officer who had shot and killed Eddie Irazare. Instead, he argued that those involved in looting used the protest as an excuse to engage in criminal behavior. The chief said this had nothing to do with the protests. What we had tonight was a bunch of criminal opportunists. Stanford also said police have made at least 20 arrests so far and two firearms were recovered. Officials say they're not sure if those firearms were connected to any of the looting. Did you say a, a Lululemon store got looted? Lu, Lululemon. Lululemon. Lu, that, Lulu, that must be Lulu, different than Lululemon. Lulu, no, it is Lululemon. 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 Yeah, that's the... the Spandex store, right? The I got pants high from, priced. I got pants from them. Yeah, they got they, they really have, something to really accentuate I think your these butt are, cheeks. I think these are lemon lulus. Well, lemon that, lemon that, lulus. Those are girl pants. No, Joe, they're not, they're, Kenny. They're the ones that make their butts stick out. No, they're great pants because they don't wrinkle. They make men's clothing too. Yeah. Okay. A you? lot of people like the lulu yep. because <laughs> it's tight. And you yeah. make fun okay. of me for wearing Carhartts, yeah. and you're wearing women's. But they're not women. That's real, real, real pants. Johnny, thank you. Joe, Joe, you know what? What? I have on the shirt that you gave me about 10 years ago. Where Just did I it. get it? I don't know. You said you saw it in a store. Oh, it's all about it guitars? It's a tremendous yeah. shirt. Yeah, I, I like that. the shirt. I, really I don't know like why. Shirt, I, I saw that somewhere. Uh, thank you. Can you take a time out? And oh, then we'll we come back it. with we this day. Let, we're done. let us take History. a break. A break. A lot of news. News. Please, Reavers. Hit the button. The Earth is not your mother. The Joe Suchere Show. Only because they come to us. Where? All the way from Eden Prairie, where the Lymans are holed up. The traveling Lymans on this day in 1862. Uh, Today is September 27th. The legislature allowed Minnesota Civil War soldiers to vote by passing the state's First absentee ballot law. That's when it started. There you go. Okay, they screwed it all up for the rest of us. On this day in 1888. <laughs> Nine, two, seven. John Ireland was named Archbishop of Minnesota. He was born 
September 11, 1838, in Burn Church, Kilkenny County, Ireland. He arrived in St. Paul in 1852. After his ordination in 1861, he served as chaplain of the 5th Minnesota Regiment during the Civil War, organized an abstinence society, and helped bring many immigrant groups to the state. He established the Af- an African-American Catholic Church and built the Cathedral of St. Paul. A prominent Republican, he argued against the prevailing wisdom that Catholicism was compatible with democracy. Hmm. I, did I wonder not know that. that what must, a successful it? career. <clears throat> that must be what John Ireland Boulevard's named after. I bet it is. No. On this day in 1894, <laughs> John Ireland, Theodore <laughs> Ham <laughs> held an open Bishop. house at his St. Paul brewery, which he had owned since 1865 and which would be incorporated in 1896. Ham's beer has long been a popular Minnesota product, advertised by the slogan from the land of sky blue waters. It's not made here anymore. It's made I was somewhere else. Up, I was just looking up who acquired Ham's brewery. On this day. From the land of... No, that wasn't from this on this day in 1996. A statue, uh, a statue of F. Scott Fitzgerald was unveiled in Rice Park, sculpted by Michael Price, a Miriam Park resident and teacher at Hamlin University. The statue was dedicated during a centennial celebration of Fitzgerald's birthday. September 24, 1896, and unveiled by his granddaughter, Eleanor Lanahan. The event was part of the Literature Festival organized by Garrison Keeler, which brought together aspiring writers and professional authors to talk about their craft. I'm surprised we haven't canceled Scott yet. This is For true. What? A great man, a great man, and that people like to read he about was... the wreck of the F. Scott Fitzgerald. <laughs> That'd be the Edmund Fitzgerald. <laughs> but that's what Trump would think. But yes. Mr. President, he was wreck. he was thirsty. He could pull a cork, if you know what I mean. Yeah. Uh, Olympia Brewing Company <laughs> yeah. bought Paul Hams Academy. in 1973. In 1983, Pabst purchased Olympia along with Hams. And then it was then sold to Miller Brewing in 1997, my, which is now Miller Coors. My Coors. grandmother would not participate uh, for the author doing one of his biographies. Why? Maybe because she of didn't his, like him. Hmm. Yeah, a lot of people. Did he was not a like, brat. He was there. My he's my cousin. He pulled a cork. That which says means that pulling the cork runs in the family. He would like to drink, which <laughs> yeah. weighted him down. For the sea. (laughs) Superior. (laughs) Thank you, G. Ellers, and thank you, Frank Caliendo. (laughs) We would like to Frank thank. You you have to stop now because you need more private work. Yeah. You need more private work. I'm not a private, I'm the president. (laughs) Please do the back sell, Mr. President. A lot of people like to go to YouTube, where there are videos. Are they tremendous? Find tremendous videos of Garage Logic, a great podcast. As you heard today, sign up. That is all I say. I got him. <laughs> yeah, well, he went Chinese. I have to pick my words because <laughs> that varies. That's, G that's words all are I bad. Say, Garage all Logic I say. is not a like. Garage Logic, maybe yeah. Yeah. garagelogic.com, a fine website. Hey, Cha. You created this monster suit. I would like suit. to say, Cha. This is your fault. I'm going to come in painted <laughs> orange tomorrow. <laughs>